Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Hello, lesson two. Lesson two, properties of area. Classwork exploratory challenge exercises one through four. All right, there are exercises. So pause the video, see if you can do this page and then unpause and check your answer with my solutions. Okay, so here we go. Number one, two congruent triangles are shown below. What, do that, what does that mean? Well, it means that all the sides corresponding are congruent and all the corresponding angles are congruent. So this is 90, this is 90. This angle, which we don't know, is congruent to this angle. This angle is congruent to this angle. 12.6 equals 12.6, that's the long leg. And the short leg, 8.4, is congruent to this short leg, 8.4, thus making the hypotenuse is, is, is congruent. I could find the hypotenuse by doing the Pythagorean theorem, but it's not asking for that. A, calculate the area of each triangle. So with my students, I always, always, always say, write the formula. Area equals one half the base times the height. And then substitute in your givens. B is 8.4. H is 12.6. And simplify. Um, I like getting rid of that half when I have even values. And I like getting rid of the bigger one. So they're both even. And half of 12.6 is 6.3. So this half, so I'll bring down the 8.4. And this one half will make this 12.6, 6.3, okay? If you're doing this manually, it makes it easier, but I will use the calculator to save time. 8.4 times 6.3 equals 52.92. And they didn't say inches, feet, meters, anything like that, so I always use the word units when nothing is used and it's squared. So the area is 52.92 square units. There's A. B, circle the transformations that if applied to the first triangle would always result in a new triangle with the same area. Okay, so if I shifted this, remember what a translation is. If I took a ray, so let's review these. If I took a ray and said, okay, we are going, let's use this triangle here. We're going to move this here. Well, that would be the same as taking this ray and repeating it for every vertex and then doing this. And then if I connected, oops, not there. Connected the arrow tips is where my new triangle is going to end up. Then it would look like this. And as you can see, this triangle is now moved over to here. Okay. And if I get rid of the rays, you can see it better. And this triangle is congruent to that triangle. So a translation would make the resulting triangle with the same area. Okay, a rotation would be if I did this. Okay, so a rotation would be if I took this triangle and rotated it around some way, like so. That would still save its shape. It would be rigid, it'd be a rigid motion. So a rotation would result in a congruent triangle. A dilation would be if I took this triangle, whoops, and rotated it back to state regular, the way it was, there it is, and I dilate it now. Well, obviously these two triangles aren't congruent anymore. One is a lot smaller than the other. So a dilation will not make two congruent triangles. And then finally, a reflection. So if I take this and get rid of it, and I drew a line like so, okay, and picked 
a point and went perpendicular to here, then perpendicular the same distance on the other side would put me here. If I drew a line perpendicular to here and copied that distance, let's do it that way. Since it's longer, it's harder to do. So now I'm the same distance over here. And then finally, if I drew a line perpendicular to here and went the same distance on the other side with that distance like so, and then connected these, what would happen? Hey, go away. I would have a triangle going from here to here and then from here down to here and then from here over to here. Okay, let me just fix these a little. Something like that. So if I get rid of my measuring devices, if you will, my segments, then this is reflected across this line and it is also congruent. Okay, so there's a review of rigid motion. Explain your answer to part B. Well, I just did. Okay, number two, pause the video, see if you can do this and here we go. Welcome back, I know you paused and did this. 2A, calculate the area of the shaded figure below. So see this three right here? Well, I'm gonna mark everything with red to show you what is length three. So from here to here is three. From here to here is three. From here to here is three. From here to here is, whoops, three. That's gotta be perpendicular though. There we go. And I'm going to line, mark everything with blue, that is length seven. So there and there. So color coding can sometimes help if you're confused, confuzzled. So let's do the area of a rectangle. So I'm gonna use subscripts here. So A sub R means area of the rectangle equals length times width. The area of the rectangle equals, this is seven and this is three. So the length is seven and the width is three. So the area of the rectangle is 21 units squared, okay? And then I'm gonna go on to the triangles. Notice these two triangles are congruent. They're both bases, both of their bases are three and both of their heights are three. So I have two of them. So area of a triangle equals one half base times height, but I have two of them. So the half would go away, wouldn't it? One half of times two is one. So if I just take the base times the height, I will find the area of the two triangles, or I can just do it this way and say area of the triangle is one half, the base is three, and the height is three. So area of the triangle equals three times three is nine divided by two or nine halves, which is area of each triangle equals four and one half. But there are two of them. So the area total, the area of the shape, if you will, shaded figure, area of the shaded figure equals area of a triangle plus area of the other triangle plus area of the rectangle. So I'm being very careful in labeling all these, listing all these. So it's four and one half plus four and one half, showing all my pieces, plus 21, which equals 21 plus four is 25, 25 plus four is 29, and two halves makes 30 units squared. All right, part B says to explain how you determine the area of the figure. Well, I explained it as I went, but here it is in words. First, I realized that the two shapes at the ends of the figure were triangles with a base of three and a height of three, and that the shape in the middle is a rectangle with dimensions of three by seven. To find the area of the shaded figure, I found the sum of all three shapes, as you can see in my work. Number three, two triangles, triangle ABC and DEF are shown below, and they overlap 
The two triangles overlap forming DGC, a little triangle DGC. The base of figure A, B, G, E, F, A, B, G, E, F, it's this whole thing. It's a one, two, three, four, five-sided figure. So it is a pentagon is composed of segments of the following lengths. AD is four. Okay, so now I'm gonna label this up and let me color code it so I don't have to draw a bunch of squiggly lines. Segment red. So AD is four. Okay, AD is four. DC is three. And CF is two. So this whole base is nine. All righty, it says calculate the area of the figure. Okay. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can find the area, let's do it this way. Let's find the area of the big triangle, ABC. Okay, so let's start with that. And I'll use red because that was the portion of it. So think of it this way, it's the area of this big triangle plus the area of this triangle, but they overlap, so I have to subtract the area of the green one. So it's going to be area of triangle ABC. So there's area of triangle ABC plus the area of triangle DEF. Okay, but if I added those two, then I'd be counting this dark shaded region twice, so I have to subtract that. Everybody see that? So it's going to be minus triangle DGC. And did they call it DGC up here? Yes, they did, DGC. Minus the area, hey, oh, that's right, of triangle DGC. All right, so here we go. Area of triangle. ABC equals one half base times height, which equals one half. The base is this four plus three, so that's seven, times the height, which is this four right here. So there's the height of the big triangle, four. Okay, again, cancel the half and the four and make that two. So the area of triangle ABC is seven times two or 14. Okay, and then I'm going to add, switch to blue. I'm going to add the area of triangle DEF, which equals one half base times height, which equals one half. Now DEF is this three plus this two, which is five times the height, which is two, and the half and the two become one. So the area of the blue of the triangle DEF is two, one half times five times two, which is 10 times a half, which is simply five. Okay, so then we're going to subtract triangle, the area of triangle DGC, which equals the base, which is three, one half base times height. Let me just write that out like I've been doing, which is one half, three, and the height is 0 0.9. Okay, so that is going to equal uh, nine times three is 27. So that's going to be 2.7 divided by two, which is 1.35. Okay, 2.7, half of 2.7, 1.35. All right. Okay, so now we're going to complete this. So we're taking 14 plus five 
minus 1.35, which is, so the area of that five-shaped pentagon, that pentagon, the five-shaped figure here, five-sided figure here, A, B, G, E, F, okay? They call it that right there, A, B, G, E, F. The area equals 14 plus five minus 1.35. So the area is 19 minus 1.35. So the area is 17.65 units squared. Okay, page two, is this page two? No, it's page three. Page three brings us to part B, explain how you to determined the area of the figure. Whoops, let's try that again. Copy, unlock, yeah, okay, paste. All right, since the area of triangle DGC is counted twice, it needs to be subtracted from the sum of the overlapping triangles, which is what we did. Number four. A rectangle with dimensions 21.6 by 12 has a right triangle with a base of 9.6 and a height of 7.2 cut out of the rectangle. Find the area of the shaded region. So the area of the shaded region in this case will be the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangle. So I'm gonna do this over here. So the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangle is going to be the area of the shaded region. Let me move this over here. So the area of the shaded region equals the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangle. So the area of the shaded region is going to equal the area of a rectangle, which is base times height, okay, minus the area of the triangle, which is one half base times height. So I'm just gonna do this all in one step or one equation, okay? So the area, let's just stay black here, area of the shaded region equals the base of the rectangle, 21.6, times the height of the rectangle, which is 12, minus all of this, which is one half, the base of the rectangle, which is 9.6, times the height of the triangle, which is 7.2. Simplifying, I get the area of the shaded region equals 21.6 times 12, 21.6 times 12 is 259.2, so 259, 0.2 minus the area of the triangle. So the whole rectangle without the triangle being cut out is this area here. So now I'm cutting out the triangle or removing it. And this 9.6, half of 9.6 is 4.8 because that half will cancel that. So then I'm going to say 4.8 times 7.2, 4.8 times 7.2, equals 34, 34.56, 3456. So it's 34.56. So the area of the shaded region is going to equal, and I'll take 259.2 minus 34.56, and I get 224.64. 0.64. It doesn't say inches or anything, so we always use the word units squared or square units. Okay, so there's the area of the shaded region. Explain how you determine the area of the shaded region. Took the area of the rectangle, subtracted the area of the triangle. Okay, so I subtracted the area of the triangle from the area of the rectangle to determine the shaded region. Okay, page four brings us to the end of lesson two. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.